Hi, I'd like to tell you about Recast, a system to reduce emissions of carbon dioxide from shipping and from transport. In summary, I'll lay out the challenge, the Recast concept, tell you about the chemistry and the thermodynamics, and then describe the principal elements of the system on a Kamsar Max and at a port. Then I'll talk about phase two, how we can go to zero emissions, and finally, the route to bring the technology to TRL-9. So the challenge, shipping uses 300,000, 300 million tons of bunker fuels a year and generates 900 million tons of CO2. The IMO target is for a 50% reduction by 2050. Our focus has been on the existing fleet, ships that are committed for 20 or 30 years, knowing that refineries will be producing heavy fuel oil, bunker fuel for many, many years to come. Recast is retrofitable, using existing fuels. There's a sorbent, which needs something like 9% of cargo space, but it delivers 50% emissions reduction, and it will enable going to zero in phase two. It's safe, it uses existing technology repurposed for shipping, and it's low-ish in cost. The concept. Recast is a calcium looping system. Lime is made in a calyx lilac calciner, and it is used both as a CO2 sorbent and as a fuel. So lilac calciner takes in green fuel, biomass or renewable power, um, and limestone, either limestone from the ship or used sorbent on the ship or limestone from a quarry. It's calcined, uh, the, the CO2 is captured for sequestration and low emissions lime is loaded onto the ship. On the ship, the marine diesel engine flue gas is passed through a calyx uh, carbonator where the lime captures the CO2 and the loaded lime, the limestone, is put back into storage and delivered back to the cal calciner at the port. So the calciner is all proven technology that exists. It's the system on the ship that is new. A little chemistry and a little thermodynamics. The current world fleet uses bunker fuel, which has an LHV of 40 gigajoules per ton or thereabouts. Going into a marine diesel engine, which is very sophisticated, delivers about 50% efficiency, and therefore there is 20 gigajoules of motive power per ton of bunkers to drive the ship. But at the same time, it generates about three tons of CO2. Now, in theory, capturing that sea ton, three tons of CO2 by carbonating four tons of lime would generate 12 gigajoules of exothermal energy. Uh, it's one of the anomalies, the delights of the world that in the carbonating of lime, you get back as exothermal energy, 100% of the endothermal energy you had to put in to calcine it in the first place. The scrubber or circulating fluidized bed carbonator, some 20 meters high, two and a half meters in diameter, captures the CO2 and the uh, waste heat recovery system takes the exhaust heat and the exothermal energy with something like a 30% efficiency would deliver an extra additional seven gigawatts per ton of bunkers motive power. So, a ship with a recast system can reduce its fuel use for the same amount of power. In our first concept to meet the IMO 2050 target, we're calling it phase one operation, with 40% of the CO2 captured out of the flue gas, 60% of the lime converted to limestone, 
to generate the equivalent motive power from the engine with 50% emissions per nautical mile, the ship would use 80% of the bunkers and it would need 2.6 tons of lime per ton of bunkers. The key components are the Calix Lilac Calciner, producing low emissions lime. A plant, this one is in Bacchus Marsh, just outside Melbourne and Australia. Fuel agnostic. Delivering that lime with the bunker fuel by truck to the ship. The ship has lime storage for lime and uh, the, also the storage would also store the used sorbent, um, waste heat recovery system and scrubbers. Um, the used sorbent is returned to the calciner for renewal. Now, fitting it to an existing ship, uh, Camsar Max here as an example, the Camsar Max bunker capacity is two and a half thousand tons. It would generate nearly 8,000 tons of CO2 with recast, 50% CO2 savings, we would need to load some 6,000 tons of lime, 2.6 times the bunkers. That would become nearly 10,000 tons of used sorbent. The sorbent hoppers, which would be used first of all for um, l fresh lime and then for used sorbent, uh, would be eight, nearly 9,000 cubic meters. And the waste heat recovery system would be able to add up to two and a half megawatts of power to the prop shaft. The scrubbers, four of them, 20 meters high and about two and a half meters in diameter. Now you can see that's a considerable um, subtraction from the load carrying capacity of the ship. But for the same energy uh, of the two and a half thousand tons of bunkers, the ammonia required would weigh eight and a half thousand tons and the tankage would be eleven and a half thousand cubic meters so more um, cargo space would be needed for an ammonia system. At the port we have the Kylix calciner, the lilac calciner which would deliver a hundred thousand tons of lime Two and a half thousand tons per ton of bunkers. That's enough lime for, say, six Camsar Max ships total years operation. And the used lime, the loaded sorbent, would be returned to the calciner. A, a section, a, a portion of it, 15%, we think, would be taken off and sold as limestone so that some fresh lime could be delivered. The total loop of the lime roughly, uh, a, a particle would go around five or six times uh, before it's replaced. There would be 80,000 tons of CO2 sequestered per annum um, from the lime generation. Now in phase two, we imagine that there will be agreement that the used sorbent can be scattered in the wake of the ship. Uh, the limestone would simply sink to the bottom of the ocean because the ocean is already a supersaturated solution of limestone. Um, witness the White Cliffs of Dover. The unconverted lime, 40% um, of the lime, would convert in the ocean surface to calcium bicarbonate and draw in um, 1.7 moles of CO2 for each mole of lime. The ocean's capacity for calcium bicarbonate is absolutely enormous and calcium bicarbonate is slightly alkaline so we're reducing ocean acidity. The um, lime volume would need to be increased from 2.6 to 3.1 tons of bunkers per ton of bunkers but with ocean liming, that whole system would have net zero emissions. Now, the technology is not yet proven. Here is the development path for moving to TRL-9. Lime capture from diesel exhaust concentrations, about five or six percent, would need to be proven. 
and then the system to be demonstrated on land at 500 kilowatts, capture from an actual diesel exhaust going from 6.5% CO2 down to 1.5% CO2 is the sort of level we're looking for, demonstrate the waste heat recovery from the carbonator scrubber at about 600 degrees C, which is a good temperature for um, uh, steam generation of electricity, the scrubber at that temperature and concentration would capture a great deal of the sulfur generation, would burn the particulates, would capture VOCs, and with a small amount of um, ferrous oxide catalyst, would reduce the NOx. So it's a very considerable cleanup of the exhaust from one scrubber. We want to demonstrate that on having proven it on land on a ship, a slipstream, one to two megawatt scale, then a full-scale demonstration on a four-stroke engine, and finally a full-scale demonstration on a two-stroke engine would bring us to TRL 9. And we're looking around at the moment for funding to carry out that development program. As I said, the IMO plans 50% reduction by 2050, Recast could deliver that emissions reduction now at some $75 per tonne and it could be retrofitted on the existing fleet. Thank you very much for your attention.